Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I want to do something that's a little bit of a departure from what I normally do on the channel, but is here by popular demand, and I want to do a first impressions video. Um, I've had a lot of people, since I posted the, the unboxing video where this guy asked me, well, Nick, what do, you, what do you think? How do you like it? What do you think so far? Because it is kind of a strange thing for my channel. This is way beyond anything I've done before here. I mean, this is a high-end luxury watch, unfortunately, coming in at high-end luxury watch prices, and uh, a lot of people are curious what I'm thinking here, and so what I figured I'd do is I'd talk a little bit about the things that I'm already loving and the things that I'm already not loving so damn much, and then a little bit about the other experiences I've had here so far. So uh, let's go on ahead and talk about the good and the not so good and the rest of it. All right, let's go there. Okay, so there are four things that I am just in love with in this watch so far. Um, the first of which, I never thought I'd be saying this, but it is the accuracy of the watch. This watch is absurdly accurate. Uh, for a mechanical, that is. We are looking at accuracy along the lines of 0.3 seconds per day in, in the 18 days since it's last stopped. That is incredible. That is a rate of accuracy along the lines of what I've seen from some quartz watches in the past. That is a great, incredible... And the fact that they're able to do that kind of accuracy using a mechanical movement with the funny little spinning balance wheel and everything in there is incredible engineering and frankly is really, really neat. And so not only do I get the joy of knowing that my watch is, you know, telling me the time properly, but I get the joy of knowing that it's doing so through an incredibly complicated mechanical process. That's pretty cool. So that's the first thing I'm in love with. The second thing I'm in love with about this watch is the loom. I'll charge it off camera here. The loom on this watch is incredible. I wear my watch overnight. That's just kind of who I am. That means that if I roll over in the middle of the night, I, I can just look over at my watch and I know what time it is and whether I've got more time to sleep or less and the loom on this watch is nothing short of incredible. And I say that for a couple of reasons. First off, it's it's super luminova, but it's applied very thickly so you get a bunch of light basically all throughout the night. This is not only like legible in the sense of, yeah, you can make it out, but it's just like bazam. You can get up at 5 a.m. in a pitch black bathroom and see your light, uh, your watch is casting light against the wall. Holy crap, is this loom good. And that brings me so much joy. The other thing that brings me joy is that the watch is very legible even in the dark with this loom. And not just because of the brightness, but because of the way that it is applied. You can see here that the hour hand and the minute hand are differently sized and differently shaped. And so it's not at all hard to tell which is which at late at night, and you in fact have a loom pip at every single hour. So you're not trying to remember, okay, which one's missing. You know, it's not a hard thing to do, but at 2 a.m. anything's a hard thing to do. So I love, love, love the loom on this watch. It is so great, and it's better than any other watch I've handled. So that's wonderful. Next thing I gotta say I love is the dial on this watch. This is the blue model. There is a black model and there is a blue model. And I was initially looking at black, but the sales guy at my uh, my my jeweler told me, you know what, Nick, you should look at the blue. And I didn't quite get it, but now I do. Because right now, this looks to be sort of a deep grayish blue, almost a Prussian blue sort of thing. I'm going to put a color correct light onto it here. And we're going to see that dial start to change color. Now suddenly it's a much more royal sort of blue. And in fact, in direct sunlight, it almost gets to a point, and I'm sure the camera's not capturing it this well because the reflections and whatnot, but it almost gets to a point where there's a, almost a teal look to it. Yeah, we're starting to see a little of it. This dial is a chameleon. Um, in regular indoor lighting, it looks like a grayish blue. If you go a little darker, it turns into a black, and in, in shade, it looks gray. Every time you look at this watch, this dial is a different color. This may seem like a completely absurd thing to be talking about, and at some level it is. But it is really, really cool to have an element of... God, I... I I feel dirty even saying this, but it is a little bit magical. The watch is shape-shifting in terms of color. And that's way cooler than, you know, just a flat black dial that I've had in a lot of other watches. So I love that very much. It's a little tiny thing, but it is a little tiny thing that brings me a lot of joy. Because it's pretty much always pretty. Then finally, the last thing I am in love with from this watch is this quick adjust bracelet. I showed this off in the sneak preview, but this is a revelation. What this means is that I can put this on my wrist, and I have. Oh, do I love having this on my wrist. Anyways, um, and then if it's a little too tight, all I need to do is, without even removing it from my wrist, I can pop the clasp open, press my thumb onto this little push bar here, 
and then slide the clasp out a little bit, and then it locks back into place. And you can usually do it just by feel and get the, you know, the next slot out. And you've got, let's see here, looks like six or eight different slots that you can adjust from. So you've got a, a fair amount of travel going on here. And so you can have the watch be very, very loose if you want that for whatever reason. So right now, it's kind of rattling around on there. Um, or you can have it be as tight as you'd like. Um, that is just spectacular. See, right now with the swelling in my wrist, this is just too tight. But it, some days it isn't. So that's a wonderful thing. And I gotta say, the comfort of the bracelet with that quick adjust is huge. Because not only is it a good bracelet, but it is a good bracelet that always fits you. If you've worn a metal bracelet for any length of time, you know that your arms swell and stuff. And the fact that oh, I don't even have to think twice about it. It's like, oh, watch is a little thick. Unconsciously, I have adjusted the watch to fit my wrist beautifully. Love, love, love that bracelet. It's going to be really hard to go back to anything else if I do. So those are the things that I am in love with right now about this guy. The accuracy, the loom, the dial, and the coloration of the dial, and the quick adjust. Um, let's talk about what I am not in love with. Okay, on the bad side, unfortunately, there are four things that I don't care for as much about this watch. Um, the first of which is actually the weight. Um, this is a very, very heavy watch. Uh, adjusted for my relatively small wrist, this comes in at 6.93 ounces. That is a very, very heavy watch. I like a more substantial watch in general. When I've worn titanium watches in the past, which are much lighter, they tend to feel a little bit almost toy-like, um, like there's not enough there. But this is pushing the other side of it. With a weight like this, you really feel the watch kind of, it's got a center of gravity of its own on your arm. It's, it's not transparent. You wave your arm around and you feel your watch very, very strongly. And so that weight is honestly a little bit much. And I would like to see that dialed down a little bit. And alongside it, I would actually like to see the, uh, the the height of the watch dialed down as well. This watch is a chubby bunny. Holy crap. Um, you know, if you look at it, you can see because there's a display back, there's a little bit of extra uh, thickness down here. There's thickness from the bezel up here, and there's an extra thick dome crystal. I mean, this is what you get when you buy a watch that is water resistant to 600 meters, which, by the way, I acknowledge is patently absurd for a guy who sits at a desk. But still, um, I like the style. <laughs> Anyways, this is very, very thick. I mean, this is almost as thick as a standard U.S. dime. So you can use that as sort of a gauge. Press that into your wrist, and that's how far this is going to stick up above the rest of you. Given it's not as terrible as you'd think, because the part on the bottom kind of hugs down to the top of your wrist here, and the case largely sits on top of your wrist, but you still do feel it. If you're, for instance, putting on a shirt or something, it's very easy for whatever you're putting on to get snagged underneath there. Right? It's just, it is a very, very tall watch, and that makes the center of gravity high, which makes you feel it a little bit more. That's not something that's super ideal, but I can live with it. It's just, just like me, this watch could afford to lose a little weight. Let's just put it that way. Next thing, unfortunately, this watch has some bezel play back and forth here. You can see here that as I, I'll try and kind of minimize it, but you can see that there's a little bit of side-to-side -side play, as well as a little bit of up-to-down here as I'm doing this, and particularly this is the case at the, uh, when the bezel's up at the 12 o'clock position here. Is this actually a problem? No, in no way, shape, or form. It's just a consequence of how the spring system works on this bezel. The thing is, I've handled a couple of other watches since, either from Omega or even from brands like Steinhardt or Rolex, and I've not felt this degree of bezel play. And I feel like if you're paying this much money for this kind of watch, that's something that they should have better than that. So that is ugly, and it, although it's a little thing, at this kind of price point, you can't afford to have little things anymore. And then that brings us to the final issue, which is the price. This is still a crazy expensive watch. Um, retail price on this guy is about 6600 bucks. You can usually do a lot better by going to an authorized dealer, um, including mine, Lewis Jewelers in Ann Arbor. If you'd like to talk to them, hey, what do I know? And they help me out very much on this in exchange for that mention. But still, this is a very, very expensive watch. And practically speaking, it tells me the time. And so I still, at some very real level, feel a little bit uncomfortable with this kind of price point. I, I don't quite get it. I love the watch. It is spectacular, and I love wearing it. But I'm still not necessarily sure that a $6,000 watch is a great thing to have on your wrist. I don't know. We'll find out. That's something that my, my opinions may change still over time as I fall more in love with it or not. We'll find out. But anyways, that is absolutely a bad thing here. This is a very expensive watch, and you can get a whole bunch of watch for, you know, a sixth of the price of that. So uh, there you go. But that's what you pay for technology, I suppose. Um, 
then, yeah, let's talk about a couple of other little things and respond to a couple of questions. There were two final viewer questions that are really common that I want to address. The first one is, well, Nick, how does it do on a NATO strap? So a NATO strap, for those of you not in the watch world, is just a, a sort of a nylon webbing strap uh, that... Uh, you can put onto your watch, and then it's nice in that the watch is actually secured by two points here. And so if one of the spring bars breaks, uh, the, the watch remains on your wrist. It's not a huge failure mode, but it is definitely a thing. Uh, but anyways, and then you just strap the watch to your wrist that way. This watch works fine on a NATO strap. It's pretty easy to swap one over because all you need to do is just move this guy to one side, move the other, using a spring bar tool, and you're over there. Um, unfortunately, I don't have any NATO straps that are, well, magnificent looking on this watch. I've ordered a couple from uh, various companies. I might do a review or two. But yeah, this is absolutely NATO strappable. The other big question I've gotten from people is about the cost carry comfort curve. This uh, is a concept I talk about in one of my other videos. I'll link it down below. But the basic idea is if you buy something that is kind of outside of your range. If you really go the extra mile to spend something, oh my God, is this outside of my range, generally speaking. Thank you so much to all my generous viewers, donors, etc. Um, but nonetheless, this is definitely outside my range. People ask, are you comfortable wearing it? Is it something you're constantly scared of, etc.? Um, no, but the only reason for that is that insurance is a thing. The very day I bought this watch, I called my insurance company and I, I faxed them over the, um, these are the same folks I just used for my uh, the, the homeowner's policy, car, whatever. Um, and I've, I just sent them over the appraisal from the jeweler with serial number, etc. And they put a little thing on my policy that basically means that for 20 bucks a year, and let's face it, 20 bucks ain't that much money, this watch is completely covered. If anything happens to it, without any deductible, they will cover the price of the watch. Uh, and that's a really nice feeling. And it applies pretty much everywhere. It applies to theft from my wrist. So if I get mugged, I can just hand my watch over. No, qu no question, no concern. No piece of gear is ever worth dying for, just hand it over. But I can just do that, no freaking problem, and it'll be covered. Or if, if someone steals it out of my safe at home, some super cat burglar Ocean's Eleven BS, uh, on some day that I'm not wearing it, uh, it, then sure, it's covered there too. It even covers things like damage, so if it falls off my wrist on the top of an apartment block and just shatters into a bazillion pieces on the ground, they'll cover it. Or even just other accidental, I mean, and so that really removes a lot of the concern. I mean, sure, I feel, honestly, like a little bit of a jackass wearing something so expensive around, but it's not in that level of, oh my god, I could lose so much money right now, because I know I'm covered. And so that is a real thing. It's not a very expensive thing to do, and it makes a major difference if you're going to do something like this. So, uh, yeah, anyways, that's the cost carry comfort curve. Insurance isn't usually a thing for, you know, knives or other pieces of gear, but once you get up the jewelry, it is absolutely, and it's something you should consider. So anyways, um, that's this Planet Ocean here. I do love this watch very much. There's a lot of joy here, and I'm looking forward to doing the full review, which will have a lot more detail than this, and that's borderline scary. But I'm loving already a lot of elements, the accuracy, the loom, the dial, the quick adjust, and despite the height, the weight, the bezel play, and the price, this guy has been really hard to kick off my wrist since I got it. So there you go. I hope this has been interesting, that it answers some of those initial questions, but mostly I hope that you have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day and keep an eye out for some nice budget watch reviews coming soon i'm trying not to go too high end on you guys have yourselves a good one bye now